So we're completing uh, Talmud 1 uh, from Rav Hirsch, um, in, in which he's talking about the uh, the destruction of the temple and the ghosts that followed after. <clears throat> and we'll continue from where we were last week. The historical miracle of the historical miracle of the divine providence is not the downfall of Israel, but its very existence. This is a very important concept. He it, it starts off with a like dramatic mm. moment. Right? Is that you know the 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 story of Israel's continued existence is one that clearly the whole world recognizes miraculous. Israel became a nation in slavery. Twice it was destroyed. Twice not only was it destroyed, but the country was almost emptied out of people. Right? And three times we've returned. You know, and today we speak the language that was spoken at the time of King Solomon and, and King David at the time of Mashrabinu. We read the books that were given at Sinai. We learn the Gemara that was taught, you know, in, both in Jerusalem and in Babylon. Our discussions, our learning are still very much rooted in uh, the emiss of the, those times, in spite of the fact that our nations were destroyed twice and rebuilt three times. Although clearly the rebuilding is mm. far from over, maybe we just begin to, to move around the dirt a little bit, getting ready for the real building that is yet to come. When this providence hides its face, then Israel's catastrophes are the natural results of the struggle of helplessness against violence. Only so long as the ethereal writing penetrates the stone and encompasses all sides sides of it are the letters upheld. Remember, he was speaking earlier, just a, a moment to review, is the unique quality of the luchos, that the letters can be read from both yeah, sides. Both sides. And Maybe. can be read not as a mirror image, but as a correct image of both sides. This is one of the miracles when he's saying that. And he goes on to say, the writing flies away, in quotes, and no power of man can hold up the stone. It lies irreparably broken in fragments at the foot of the mountain. This is the lesson of the fragments of the tables of the Ark of the Covenant. Hmm. Do you not see that they are to be broken? That there was no place for these tables, these tablets, among the people who danced around the golden calf? These tablets demand complete and unquestioning loyalty to the words of the divine law. They're miraculous. Mm. And the Israelites had already lost such faith <clears throat> when they were thrown into despair by the absence of Moshe Rabbeinu. What is Moses to the Jew? His strength does not lie either in Moses or in Aaron. These are for him only the heralds of the divine law. We don't worship. We don't yeah, worship. Because the, these are the messengers. They are the messengers. Exactly. These are for him the heralds of the divine law. And this word which they brought to him and planted in his midst is alone to be the support and the guide for the Jew. If Israel carries out its Torah unswervingly and unshrinkingly, it has no need to pin its hopes on man or to wait for the sons of man. It can dispense with earthly power and human pride. The word of its God marches before it, accompanies it through the wilderness, leveling all the hills, plucking out all the thorns, slaying the serpents, and searching out the places where it can rest in peace and in safety. So he's emphasizing the key is not even our greatest, Moshe and Aaron. Our key is the Torah itself, given as a gift on Sinai. Hmm. Confident and exclusive trust in the power of the divine law and the unswerving adherence to it. This is the basic condition of the Jewish salvation and the lack of such trust, doubt of the divine power of this law and of the all-suffering support which it alone is able to provide for, the, for, the, for Israel. 
This is the cardinal sin which produces all the catastrophes of Israel. So if you think back for a second to what is Tisha B'Av? Right? Tisha B'Av, yes, it's the destruction of the second temple. Yes, it's the destruction of the first temple. Yes, it's the 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 destruction of uh, during the Inquisition in Spain. Yes, it's the beginning of the first, which led to the Second World War. All of the of uh, Betar, all these things are part of it. But the very, very root, the, the, the seed of this problem, is when the Moraglum came back, and they said. What did they say? They didn't say that the land was not a good land. Mm. They said it was a beautiful land. It was a great land. They brought back grapes the size of watermelons. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the, it was unbelievable, the fruits that were there. And it's, no question. But what they made clear was God himself is not strong enough hmm. to conquer the land for us. Right? We will never survive against the giants, against the walled cities. We can't do it. Right? And when we said we can't do it, we were actually saying that our landlord can't do it, mm. that God himself can't do it. And the moment a Jew begins to think like that is the moment that he has abandoned all the gifts he's given. Right? And so he won't be in a situation where he necessarily has to be punished. You know, if you you know that there used to be a, a TV show called Get Smart. Right? Yeah, yeah. And there was a um, a dome of silence. Oh yeah, the cone of silence could never work. Right, right. <laughs> didn't work. Right? But in theory, you couldn't see it. Right. Of course, the TV audience could see it. Yeah. But there was an idea that you couldn't see it. people would bump into it, and stuff like that. Right? So we, the Jewish people, have the ability to go through life avoiding injury and not even knowing it. You know, we just finished reading, you know, the, the Parsha of Bill and Bill, right? What happens, right? The king goes to Bill and and says, I'm worried about the Jewish people. You know how to curse people, right? Go and curse them, <laughs> right? It's so, okay. You pay me enough, I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's a job. long story. Curser. We won't go into it, right? Yeah, yeah. But what happens? He tries to curse them, and he fails. Right? Well, this must be a big relief to the Jewish people. <laughs> you know, he tries over and over, and he fails, right? So the Jewish people, hey, we're golden. Right? No. The Jewish people never knew he was doing it. The story we read of Bilaam's efforts to do this, right, was not known to the Jewish people at the time it was happening. How much more so in our own world? You know, we hear about terrible violence against the Jewish people because people are Jews. No other reason, right? Over the ages and every generation. But you know what we don't hear about? We don't hear about the foiled plots. Mm. We don't hear about the failed conspiracies that go on. We don't hear about the people who destroy themselves as they're preparing to destroy us. Right? We actually never hear about most of the plots that are aimed against us because God destroys them in their infancy. We don't hear about them. <coughs> so. If there is a God in heaven, which we know there is from empirical experience, right, we're fools not to count on such a God and to look for other kinds of protection. Mm. Because in the process of doing it, we actually remove the protection that's there. You know, the, the cough that prevents you from making a turn that could be a car accident. Suddenly, you don't have the cough and have everybody have the car accident. So it's very important for us to always remember where our protection comes from. Where well, our strength comes from. And you know. Yeah, that they're they're essential to us, mm -hmm. and as long as we have that, we also have the protection. It doesn't, by the way, mean that things go perfectly for no, us. No, of course, by any means. Mm -hmm. 
understanding why things happen is something that is very That's a whole other discussion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Right? Um, okay. Confident and exclusive trust in the power of the divine law and unswerving adherence to it, this is the basic condition of Jewish salvation and the lack of such trust, the doubt of the divine power of this law and of the all-suffering support, which is alone, which alone is able to provide, uh, provide for Israel. This is the cardinal sin which produces all of the catastrophes of Israel. By the way, when he says the law, often what he's talking about is the Torah itself, mm -hmm. or he's talking about God's intention. Okay. With the Torah in his arm, in its arms, Israel can can Israel can bid defiance to all the temp tempests of the world. But even with the Torah in its arms, Israel has ever looked around for other gods to protect it. It has cast sidelong glances at the breastplates which other peoples have fashioned out of human power and natural forces. Israel often looks to other superpowers. Mm -hmm. The Jew Jews look to the king. The Israel looks to other nations rather than look to where its source of power mm -hmm. comes from. We didn't win the Six Day War. We didn't have all the miracles we had simply because we had the support of other nations. We had it because God wanted yeah, us God to, wanted win us to, win to be there. Mm -hmm. It lacked the courage to commit itself to the upper air on the wings of the Torah. It wanted a human king who should walk before it. It wanted the calf to dance around. The word of God was not enough for it. The living word of the omnipotent God shriveled up into a religion, into a cult. <laughs> it's a very essential point that Rav Harsh is making here, is that Judaism is not a religion. Mm. It is not a cult. It is everything. It shriveled up into a, a religion, a cult, representing and satisfying only one side of life and requiring quite other levels and supports <clears throat> and leaders and gods to supplement it. Once again, after a lapse of centuries, a desired human king, it desired a human king and the fear of this king lest he might be overthrown by reawakening reverence for the unseen power of the divine word brought the calf back again to them. The power of the divine word was banished into its temples, and the people were afraid to confide to confide to their their life, their homes, their cities, their land, and their state. For these, they sought other bases, other supports, other ties. The spirit of God vanished from before the people, and the might of the Assyrian reduced to ruins. The Jewish state which should have been based on the divine word. Hmm. Right. So we cause our own problems. You know that the Assyrians, you know the, what the name of the capital of Assyria was? The no. Com, right? capital of Sin, uh, Assyria was a very famous city called Nineveh. 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 Mm -hmm. If you read the story um, of Jonah, of Jonah, right, you understand that God sent him to Nineveh. Mm. to get the people to repent. And Jonah didn't want to go. We know the story. Yeah, sure. He was trying everything he could to avoid <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah. Why? Maybe he understood that if the people of Assyria did tshuva, and only if they did tshuva, would they be the people to bring the wrath of God to his firstborn that as long as they had not done tshuva, they could not conquer oh, hey. the land of Israel. And Jonah understood. So he was maybe because he's a prophet? He's Jonah a prophet. understood. So he didn't want to, you know, he said, look. So he's basically aiding, um, the, aiding the situation of having destruction of his own people? Yeah. Jonah's saying, what are you doing? Our own people aren't doing tshuva. You're going to send me to the Gentiles, <laughs> to the idol worshippers. How will it look if they do tshuva and we don't? What will be the results? Yeah. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going to do not it. Going, yeah. Why? Not because I'll fail. Yeah. 
but because I'll succeed. Yeah. And if I succeed and you look at the Assyrians and you look at the Yidden, what will you see? They heard the word of God and changed their ways. We didn't. Yeah, and he sensed that the though. die was cast mm. at that point. And by the way, if we look at our history, we're never defeated by a backwater country. Mm. It's always the superpower mm. that defeats us. It's always that which is given the gift of power by God. Yeah, we help it along. It. It's <laughs> not, you know, some little group of people that come yeah. and defeat us. It is that power, whether it's Alexander, whether it's Babylon, whether it's Greece, or Titus, whether it's you know Machimo, Paro, or 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 or, or the or Hitler, Machimo, mm. right? It's always great forces that defeat us, not trivial things. And things don't become great mm. unless God allows them to become yeah. great. That could be an entire discussion on its own, just one reason why. You That's right. <laughs> why you did that. Once again, the Spirit of the Divine Word awoke in the people and reasserted its power in Israel. Cyrus bowed before it, and the Maccabeans led it to victory. Yet Israel, for a second time, forsook its standard as though it had not been the word of God which had led them to victory, the descendants of the Maccabees, the skins of the Maccabees, threw it into a corner or degraded it to a mere footstool of their majesty. The very, the very people who are the heroes of the Hanukkah story, their mm. descendants, in the end, should never have been kings because yeah, they were very, Levites. Yeah, yeah, they can They weren't from priests Yehuda. are not good kings, eh? No, and they weren't yeah. from Yehuda. Right? And eventually, they were calling the Romans in to settle their own disputes, and it was the beginning of the end because they were the yeah, wrong people yeah. to do it, and they they didn't realize it. They took they took firm hold of the sword and wielded it to make themselves kings. For the second time. They made the fate of the Jewish people depend on a human king, on human kingship. And for the second time, they disassociated the state affairs of Israel from the spirit of Torah and dethroned the Torah. The home and family life was still permeated with the spirit of Torah, but it vanished from the conduct of the state. So well, he here, now. here we understand that the idea of the separation of church and state mm. Right. Only applies in a non Torah state. Yeah. In a perfect Torah state, they're in harmony and they work together. Then the wild Romans swept over the walls mm -hmm. on the day in which the tables of the law were broken. This is the fast of Tammuz. Right? On that day, the Jewish state fell in ruins and also. And also, and also, everything fell. Divine service also came to an end, and the Torah was burnt, and the the heathen image was set up in the temple, Oof. and also, and in the temple of the Most Holy. For when Israel estranges itself from the Torah in its practical life, and when it has one God in its temple and another for its political purposes. A very important point. Mm. When it builds its temple to the God of the Torah, but outside the temple pays homage to the power of man or to a golden calf, then God himself extinguishes the fire on his altar and himself makes the service of his altar an object of mockery to strangers. Then he allows a pig to be delivered to Israel when it buys a sacrifice for the altar. Then he allows the Torah itself to be thrown into the fire and he gives up his own place in the temple to an image. And why? Because Israel has already degraded him to a dead and impotent idol before which incense is burnt. It's a very... It is it's terrible. It, it's a very painful thing. And yeah. he's, he's saying that 
We should never think that God abandons us. No, it's always the way around. We abandon God. Yeah. And God looks and says, but our there's no place is, for me. is filled with that. Like our history is filled with like the kings, the whole volumes of kings, is, and uh, it's all like that. Everything is like that. You know, there's a there's a song from my youth, right? It was written by two Jewish guys, Simon and Garfunkel, mm -hmm. in which they asked the question: Is God dead? Right. Well, heaven forbid! Heaven forbid! We should ever ask such a question, right? We live in a world of His Majesty, of His miracles. We can ask this question. Mm. When we ask questions like that, right? When we say, "Where is God?" Right? When they say it in the Torah, "Where is God? Is God among us?" That's the question. Who appears? I'm awake to do His dirty business. Mm. Right? If we don't ask the question, He won't appear because He's terrified of God. But if we say, yeah, where is God? Where is God? Then he give him an opening. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Of course, yeah. It's terrible. I, I'm still freaking out that you can have the base of Midash, all these miracles happening, and it literally become blasé, and then they go and end up screwing it all up. But it's incredible. But when you think about it. Not but really. it's true. Not, rea not really. Yeah. Not really, actually. If the, they're... All the, you, your point is well taken, but in our own time... Yeah, we have the same thing. We have the same thing. You know, David Ben-Gurion, who was not a famous famous for his observance of Judaism, made a statement... That's the first prime minister the first prime minister, first defense minister of Israel, made a statement. He said, a, a, a Jew in Israel, an Israeli, who does not believe in miracles is not a realist. It's not a realist, right? And I would compare that phrase to a very famous phrase from a movie called Casablanca, in which Sidney Greenstreet tells Ingmar Bergman, it would take a miracle, a miracle to get you out of Casablanca. And the Germans have outlawed miracles, meaning the Nazis have outlawed miracles. Right? So on one hand, you have a very pragmatic, you know, head of the underground in mm -hmm. Casablanca is saying the Germans have outlawed miracles as though a person can do it, right? Everybody goes, no, yeah, 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 right, right. On the other hand, you have the Prime Minister of the reborn state of Israel saying something that is a deeply religious statement, whether he thought about it or not at the time. I think he probably knew. He's saying a, a Jew who does not believe in miracles is not a realist. Hmm. And yet, the state of Israel was reborn, you know, in our lifetime. A lifetime, right? It is an incredible miracle. Day by day, what goes on in Israel, you know, it, it, when I was a kid, it was amazing. They made the desert bloom. Yeah. Nobody talks about the desert blooming now. Mm. They talk about the, you know, the uh, Google's plant, yeah. you know, in or, or a chip maker's plant in Israel. The high tech world of Israel. Israel goes from one incredible accomplishment to another. The the economies of the world, you know, are teetering. Israel's economy seems solid and growing, right? You know, it's a country with no oil. Mm -hmm. but it has a resource that is incredibly powerful and valuable and they know how to use it. It is human being. It's a constant miracle before our eyes. Forget the military element of it. Mm. The sophistication of the Israel's military, its accomplishments. Forget the Six Day War. Forget Antivity. Forget all of everything. How can you forget them all? Mm -hmm. right. You want miracles? Yeah. You have miracles you in have your miracles lifetime, right major miracles, yeah, yeah. major miracles, and we can explain them. Mm -hmm. People were able to explain the miracles of the yeah. of, of, of the Exodus too, you know. Yeah, right. I can explain the miracles of the Six Day War. Ah, we caught them off guard. It was preempted the red. Mm. Four hundred million enemies. <laughs> Seven trained armies yeah. right? war after war 
They want to drive us into the sea. Mm. They don't succeed. Because <laughs> we're such tough guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Jews are not famous as tough guys. Mm. They're famous as big thinkers, you know, comedians, <laughs> scholars. Yeah. They're not famous as soldiers. Mm. To look back at our famous soldiers, you have to look back to the time of the first and second temple and just ask her. Mm -hmm. We've had a history of no military accomplishment for a long time. Mm -hmm. Why is why are we viewed now as the Goliath of the Middle East? We're mm -hmm. tiny. Because <laughs> we're so smart. Mm -hmm. Technology is there. So even our enemies understand who God is. Sometimes better than we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can mess with us. They can't mess with God. Because God doesn't lose. No, <laughs> of course not. If we lose, we choose to switch teams. Yeah, that's it. Too. And if we switch teams, then we're out there, you know, without a helmet. Mm. It's not a good place to be. Mm. We're surrounded by wolves mm -hmm. and with no protection. Mm. If we stay on the right team, right, it's a team that never loses. Mm -hmm. It's a very important team. For sure. And, and we. We have trouble in the same way, and we look back and say, "Why? How could they have had all those miracles and stop believing?" Mm. Right. We have miracles every day. Sure, you know, very good world, point. You know. you know, and if we had any question, God like throws them in front of our face now. It's mm. like, and we can't see it as normal. We absolutely can't see it. No other country, you know. And it's, I forget what the number is. The Israel has the second most, not per capita, absolute number, I think, of medical patents in the no, world. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a country of under 10 million or something? What, what's, the, what's the numbers? I don't know no, what the 13 numbers half million, 14 million, something like that. Under 15 million. Yeah, it's very, right. nothing. How many people live in America? 330 million, I think, or something like that. And Israel is just behind them? <laughs> <laughs> Israel should have less than 1%. Yeah, right? Because uh, the Jews are so smart. Mm. The Chinese are smart. The Japanese are smart. The Indians are smart. There's a lot of smart people. There's a billion plus of them. <laughs> yeah, and they're very smart. And they're doing very well, you know? Because they're the hate. Right. What we do is not because we're smart. And it's not because we don't sleep much. It's not because we work hard. It's because God chose us to do things, to accomplish things. We should be using it to accomplish the right things. Okay, let, let's go on. I want to finish this chapter before. Yes, so. go ahead. The 17th of Thomas, the Jewish state fell into ruins, and on this day the Torah began its triumphal progress through all lands and kingdoms. Look what Israel has been since then. Remember when Hirsch is writing again. This mm -hmm. is before the founding oh, of the yeah. state of Israel. With the very ground cut from beneath its feet, without power, without earthly support, forsaken by all the world, with only God and its Torah to look to, it goes on study, showing the power of the divine word. It shows how man can be born aloft on the pinions of the divine law. It shows the sustaining power of the divine spirit. Under the inspiration of the law, it displays itself as the unassailable witness to the majesty of God for the vocation of man. From time to time in the course of the centuries, God allowed his people ever and anon to touch the earth again. He put it to the test to see whether it has become right for the, ex for the external Torah state on earth. This is very important now. Mm. Whether the miracle of his existence through the centuries of Gaulus had at length taught it to despise utterly the gods of the earth. Whether at last the experience of these wonders has eradicated from it the obstinacy which was ingrained in it as all men and which prevented it from acknowledging the complete power of the divine word. Whether it had at length learned to devote itself to Israel unreservedly exclusively to the Torah and whether it could preserve this devotion which had never become alien to it in Gauss also in freedom and in abundance and in independence and power 
So the question that God was asking every time he tested us, every time we almost got our own land, <laughs> right, was are they ready for it? Mm. Are they able to recognize the difference between God and the power of man? The wealth, yeah, well, yeah, the true. shafa from God. Like we read every day in the, in the, in the uh, Siddur, do not rely on the swiftness, thighs of man, the swiftness of man, do not rely on the horse. It all comes to naught, right? You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. Do we really believe that? Mm. Is, is the question that question God answers. Yeah, right? it. And it seems to me that in our lifetime, He may have answered this in the affirmative, but we yeah. haven't finished the job. Yeah. But Israel had up to now always given signs that it has not yet reached this point. True. It has shown that it no longer fears the journey through the desert. And that while having no footing on this earth, it can commit itself with cheerful confidence to the celestial wings of the divine law. But it has also shown that it still has reason to fear the ground. That as soon as it touches the soil and thinks that it has firm ground under its feet, it runs the danger of abandoning the divine law and reverting as, and reverting as gods along, alongside the Torah of its God reverting to, oh sorry, hang on, and revering as gods alongside the, the Torah of its God, the political independence, the social freedom, and the civil rights which this soil provides. It runs the danger of devoting its life to them and finding room for the Torah only in its synagogue, committing afresh all the old sins which brought on it the Chorban, the destruction, of its state and its temple. This is a very, very important idea here. Is that he's saying that when times are good, mm -hmm. we risk saying that the most important thing is civil rights, the most important thing is freedom, the most important thing is wealth, success, opportunity, equality with our neighbors. It isn't. Mm -hmm. Truth is we're not equal to our neighbors. We have a greatness that God has put into us and we have a greatness in our mission. And that differentiates us. And if we accomplish our mission, the greatness is recognized by all, by God himself, by our neighbors, and by ourselves. And when we fail to accomplish this mission, it's equally recognized on all sides. And by the way, this was something that has always pained me tremendously. In the war between the Tsar and Napoleon, you would think that the Jews supported Napoleon mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. he stood for a much more progressive world than the Tsar did. And the pogroms and the violence. Mm -hmm. of the but it was the opposite. The Alta Rebbe, the first, the Baltanya, the first Rebbe of Lubavitch, supported the Tsar and spied on Napoleon and mm. gave information to the Tsar's military. right? Because he felt if Napoleon wins, the Jews will have a better life in terms of Gashmis, in terms of materialism. But the, the Tsar's cruelty yeah. uh, is part of what keeps us Jewish. Yeah, because if we went with the Napoleon way, we'd yeah. we end up with not so and Jewish. This is a very, very painful thought. Mm. Hirsch, living in the, the wealth of Germany, is looking around him and saying, you're trying to change Judaism into another religion. You think that will make you more German? Mm. You think that will make you accepted? You think you have to dumb down your faith? No! saying your very existence is dependent on a thousand, thousand years of adherence to the Word of God. And only that, in the midst of this test of acceptance by your neighbors, only that will, will give you something to hold on to. And we know the tragedy of what happened to these people. Mm. You know, uh, to rely on man. The Germany, the most progressive nation yeah. in the whole world yeah, at the all time, Hirsch, and, uh, that accepted the idea of reform yeah. Jews, that accepted mm -hmm. all that was involved in it, right? We know how mm -hmm. the tragic end it came to. We should learn 
you know, as we live in a mm. liberal and acceptable yeah. democracy now. Final paragraph. And again and again, God has straightway allowed this soil to vanish from under its feet, our feet. And he has again, in such cases, committed it to the celestial wings of his Torah. And he will sustain it and teach it until it has finally reached its full and lasting maturity until all the old errors shall have been abandoned and all the old mistakes atoned for and the word will be, and the wor word will be fulfilled <clears throat> by which after the restoration of the of the tablets of the testimony the eternal covenant of god was concluded with israel and god will walk with us in the midst of our wrongdoing and though we are hard people to train up yet he will grant forgiveness to our sins and backsliding until we at length fall into his arms wholly and unreservedly as his own everlasting inheritance we should recognize that we're in the midst of that today mm. that the opportunities to move forward are there Mashiach coming Mashiach Mashiach mm. the opportunities to move forward are there and sadly the potential of backsliding losing everything mm. is there the choice is really ours mm, sure right? as we come to these nine days as we come to the border of Tisha B'Av Tisha B'Av the, the birthday of Mashiach some say we should know that we have this opportunity and it is a miracle staring us in the face we would make a terrible mistake not to move forward with the miracle that's before us. We should see it soon. We should see the temple rebuilt. We should see Mashiach in place. And the, the knowledge of God should cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen.